Hello, and welcome to the talk about modeling waiting behavior at train stations with cellular automata. In recent years, simulations gained importance as tools to evaluate the performance of buildings already during the planning phase. Um, in the cases of train stations, the dwell time of trains is an important factor. Um, it gets highly impacted by the distribution of pedestrians along the platform, as more even distribution means each of the train doors is used more evenly, which leads to faster boarding times. Hence, the more uniform the distribution on the platform, the better the uh, performance of the building. But how can you simulate the, um, the waiting behavior of pedestrians? As most of current models need, uh, need is, um, physical goal the pedestrians want to move at, like in classical application cases as evacuations, the position of the emergency exit. Each of the pedestrians heads towards these, uh, this emergency exit. But how does this change in waiting situations when no such physical goal is present? We want to present one solution in this talk. It's based on the idea of solar automata, where space is discretized into cells of 0.5 times 0.5 meters, and at each time step, pedestrian can move towards one of his unoccupied neighboring cells with a given transition probability. In our model, this transition probability is computed by the combination of multiple underlying potential fields. Um, one of these potential fields um, will not change during the course of the simulation. It only depends on the structural properties of the used geometry. In our case, we will take a more detailed look at this geometry from the train station in Bern, Switzerland. On the left-hand side, you have a stairway. In the middle, the white area is, is a ramp, and on the right-hand side, you can see some small uh, recycling bins and ashtrays, where also a smoking area is present. And the red lines indicate the entrances to the platform, where the green lines um, indicate the platform edges where the trains might arrive, or can arrive. Um, one of the potential fields we use is um, or displace the entrance or exit avoidance. Um, field, uh, experiments to have shown experiments for inflow process, processes to confined space have shown that pedestrians tend to avoid standing in areas close to um, entrances as they expect more pedestrians to pass there and hence making it uncomfortable to stand in such areas. Um, the next thing which does attract pedestrians are walls. Uh, it has been found in various um, um, laboratory experiments as well as in uh, observations on real train stations that pedestrians tend to stand close to walls as I give them some sense of safety as nobody is able to pass behind their back and also give the opportunity to have something to lean against which is more comfortable than standing in the middle of a, of a platform. Um, another thing is that pedestrians tend to stand in the area where they or train on the side of the platform where they expect their awaited train to arrive. So for example taking uh, assuming that the next train will arrive on the bottom part, here you can see that pedestrians will somehow, or somehow the parts of the, uh, on the bottom of the uh, platform are more preferable than the ones on the top. Um, combining all of the three influences, of, of, uh, combining all of these three potential fields, leads this static floor field we will use later on. Um, here you can see that on the left hand side, on the railway, on the, uh, on the stairway, and on the bottom part of the ramp, and also close to the um, obstacles and the smoking area, a higher potential is given and hence a more preferable waiting position is positioned. Um, also you can see that um, the, obviously the side of the ramp closer to the expected um, platform edge is more preferable than on the other side as you would have to walk around the um, ramp to get to your train. Um, the other four fields um, we will use will change during the course of the simulation as they are impacted, affected by the positioning of the pedestrians. So taking the same geometry as before but now putting some pedestrians on it and taking a more detailed look on the pedestrian highlighted 
in red here between the red empty smoking area on the right hand side. And the first thing is pedestrians usually do not want to stand too close to each other when traveling. Um, assuming you do not know your um, neighbor, but this is only to a certain extent. If you, if, um, if you want to pass somebody, you would try to show that you have a distance of, let's say, two or three meters, but you don't really care if your waiting position is 10, 50, or even 100 meters away from each other pedestrian. Um, combining this with the result of the aesthetic flow field leads this combined flow field. Um, as you can see here on the bottom of the ramp, where we had before a preferable waiting position, now another pedestrian has occupied this space, so this is not relevant anymore for our pedestrian. And one other thing found in yeah, found in laboratory experiments and field observations is that pedestrians usually try, uh, will stand close to the entrance of the train station and walking not that far. We assume that there is a distance where which is taken into account by a pedestrian. If there is some point of interest further away, it's rather unlikely that it will move there. So taking this distance forfeit into account, um, rem uh, remember our pedestrian we're looking or computing the forfeits for is, uh, is located between the ramp and the um, and the smoking area on the right hand side by around um, minus 8 in x direction. You can see here that anything beyond the ramp, which is like 40 to 50 meters away, is not preferable anymore because the pedestrian won't move that far. Um, yeah, this leads to this combined flow field with the um, static flow field, the pipes of flow field, and the um, distance weight. Um, anything that was preferable close to the stairway on the left hand side is not preferable anymore because, like I said before, the pedestrian would have to walk like 50 meters of 40 to 50 meters to get there. Hence, leaving only the part in basically in the smoking area, which is preferable, or anything on the bottom rack. So, but now we'll leave some other things. At the moment we take the whole platform into account, which is not that realistic, as the pedestrian, as the pedestrian doesn't have the complete overview of the situation, and especially doesn't have a global knowledge of the distribution of the pedestrians. Hence, we assume that only the area visible by a pedestrian is taken into account when choosing waiting position. This leaves only this part of the flow field to be considered when computing our transition probabilities. To compute the transition probabilities, we need further divide this flow field into, um, into the regions responsible for the transition probability of each of the neighbors. Um, we use the uh, uh, Voronoi tessellation for this. Um, we put some dummies in the, to the neighbors and then computed the Voronoi tessellation, leaving these regions. As you can see here, the um, blue area influences the transition probability of moving to the left, green of moving to the right, and so on. So, now taking a more detailed look into the um, computation of the um, transition probability. First, we will find uh, we will find the maximum number or the maximum value of the potential fields in this area. Here now um, represented for the neighbor to the left in blue. This uh, the, or this says we are looking for the maximum number in this potential field. The, uh, here the potential will be located probably in the uh, on the, in the left hand side on the bottom. And if you have computed uh, computed this. We will do the same for the top neighbor, the right neighbor, the bottom neighbor, and obviously for the cell itself, where the maximum value is the value of the um, potential field in the cell. Now, and we have computed all of the um, potentials. After normalizing, we get our transition probabilities of moving to each of the neighboring cells. In this case, it means we have a 45% probability of moving to the right, um, where the smoking area is located, and 25% probability of moving to the left, so closer to the ramp. But enough of the theory, let's take a look at some results. Again, we use, uh, we use for our simulation the train station in Bern um, for simple reason. The SPB, the Swiss Railway Company, 
installed some um, sensors to obtain trajectory data in this part of the geometry um, to ensure that the pedestrian can move to each side of the geometry as um, the original um, platform obviously is longer than the 60 meters were extended. Now we need a measure to it to see how good our well, traditional measures as density are not that sufficient to, to identify preferred waiting positions. As for example, let's take a pedestrian who stands at one specific um, spot for a whole time, but is far away from each other. The density is quite low, but he occupies this space for a long time. Hence, a different method was introduced by Kipper and Seyfried in, um, in their work. Um, they called it occupational space, where basically you, you um, look at what ratio one cell is occupied during the course of a simulation or during the um, time frame you have available. So now to, compute, uh, to compare the results. Um, on the top you can see the results from the tra real-time trajectory data from Bern, Switzerland. Um, it was, it was um, obtained, but it represents an um, afternoon peak hour, so the time was between 3 and 6 p.m. And as you can see there, um, we have some hot spots close to the um, stairway on the left, close to the ramp in the middle, and also close to the um, smoking area on the right hand side, where the maximum number is around 10, meaning 10% 10 of the time for the whole three hours, the pedestrian was standing in this, or one pedestrian was in this position. Um, our results are sh shown on the bottom. We conducted around 200 exp uh, simulations with different input um, parameters to vary how um, long the simulation ran, how many pedestrians were on the platform, and if they want to go to the top or to the bottom. Um, as you can see here also, the um, hotspots around the ramp and the stairway are given, and also more pedestrians tend to wait um, at the smoking area on the right hand side where the um, yeah, close to the obstacles. But you can also see that we are missing some of the hotspots, especially in the middle between the ramp and the uh, smoking area. This, the reason for that is that we had to remove some of the uh, pillars present in the original um, geometry, which, had, which led to errors in our um, visibility, uh, or leads to errors with our library used for the computation of the uh, vis visible area. But nevertheless, um, um, our results show good agreement with the real-time data. It's not as di distinct the uh, particular hotspots as we conducted more um, simulations as the as trains would uh, have been arrived in the time frame. Um, now to sum the talk up. Uh, we developed a model to describe the weighting behavior on platforms with a cellular automaton. Um, this model can be easily calibrated um, or can be calibrated by various pa parameters and can be further extended. If you need something else, you can add, for example, a attraction field for or repulsive field, for example, for the smoking area. For some uh, passengers might be attracting for others, they won't stand close to it. And things which are missing currently are um, yeah, more extensive parameter studies to determine parameter sets for different types of uh, travelers. Um, commuters who are very uh, familiar with the, uh, with the train station do weigh differently than passengers with luggages or who are not that, com uh, that familiar with taking the train at all. Also, the, uh, there need to be some improvement on the walking path. At the moment, it happened quite often that pedestrians move in small circles or move back and forth, and this might or can be uh, improved if we uh, would weight the movement direction depending on the previous step to enforce that pedestrians are uh, more likely to walk in a straight line than to turn around in a sharp 180 degree turn. And most importantly, the model needs to be transferred to a continuous space such it can be used in other frameworks. So, if you want to play around with this model, um, you can I uh, can find the Python implementation on GitHub and um, with the link below. And with that, I would thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you.
filtering in here. If you have any questions, thank you, Tobias, for the presentation. That was great. Really, I thought it was very interesting. Um, we'll just see if anybody has any any questions of you. I'm curious too if there's anything you've thought of since you've recorded uh, to add to it, or that, that you've thought about, um, or how the project's going. If you've had any interest through the GitLab or GitHub project. Um, yeah, basically, or well, one thing I would to add is like this um, group dynamics that uh, passengers who travel in groups would stay together at the moment. They would just move individually, and that's not like reality would move. Mm. Okay. So it sounds like it's something you're actively developing and, and doing some work on. Uh, yeah, at the moment it's, um, or it started working on it like last year or moved in that direction. And now thinking about what we had, the hard thing is there's not, not that much data available to compare against. So it's more like, yeah, educated guess if it's or oh, looks okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know how that goes. Um, Let's see, any questions of the speaker? We have about 76 people in here now. Any feedback? Oh, and I'm going to make sure I'm in the right chat. I wasn't, so <laughs> here we go. All right, Daniel Swenson has one. Um, does the fundamental diagram uh, enter your calculation? Is it important to consider? Um, it maybe become more important later on. At the moment, it's more at a yeah proof of concept stage, and we would uh, we want to see if we can model something like the real waiting behavior on platforms. But to be more precise, it may be one of the um, parameters for it, for the input. Great. It looks like uh, Wojciech is saying appreciates the name dynamic waiting. That's a nice <laughs> one. So, um, did you encounter any trouble with your agents converging on an ideal location because of dynamic visibility changing? Uh, the current view of the best place to wait. Like, did they ever walk back and forth without settling down? Uh, yeah, um, that's one. Uh, at the moment, it's one of the biggest issues of the model. The pedestrians they like, move like back and forth or moving in circuits. It's not like they really come to a halt at some point. Um, we have to see if there's some. Um, kind of factor we could consider that they may at some point say, OK, well, this position is fine enough for me. I will just stay here until my train arrives. Mm -hmm. um, was any data collected on the age profile for agents? Um, no, um, the data available was just the trajectories from the um, Swiss railway company. They have, I don't know exactly what system, but it's like a black box. You, um, they process the video of the um, platform, or ha they have sensors, and they just give the X and Y coordinates and no more information. OK. And uh, did you compare your results with any commercial software simulations? Um, not yet. We only compared it against the um, real data we had from the uh, train station and burn. OK. Great. Yeah. And if there's any other questions, we have time for one more. Okay. Do you think varying age groups would make a noticeable difference? Mm, I think um, um, a bigger difference will occur if you mix um, the knowledge of the pedestrians or of the platform. So, like daily commuters will move differently than uh, passengers who just came first time to the train station. And I maybe yeah, age groups only make a difference in their speed and moving on the platform. Okay. Great. Well, that's great. Well, thank you very much, Tobias. Appreciate you being here and participating in your great talk. So thanks again. Thank you for having me. Take care.